What's up guys, we are back with another G.I. Joe Classified Series review, taking a look at one of the recent Cobra Island. It's not necessarily the dirty word that uh, that used to be. Uh, Cobra Island figures, so of course Target exclusive. Uh, so this is Gabriel Barbecue uh, Kelly, and one that I've really been looking forward to just because he's kind of a little bit different, looks a little bit wackier uh, than some of the standard Joes. Of course, he comes in your standard classified series package. You've got the figure there in the window, some really solid artwork of him on the corner, Cobra Island call out, of course, and then you've got more artwork on the spine. You've got that sort of stats panel on the other spine. And then the back of the box, of course, in typical Cobra Island fashion, gives us the schematic layout map thing for the island. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our barbecue figure. This guy is one that I've really been looking forward to just because he's a little bit different. I mean, he's not your normal G.I. Joe kind of character. You know, he's like a firefighter, so uh, he's a little bit different. He's not, he's not, you know, an army guy, quote unquote army guy. So he does look a little bit different. He's got a little bit more of outlandish color too, which I definitely like. Uh, so let's get to it, see what he can do, see how he moves around. He's still a pretty standard figure. Uh, we've got a head that can look up really, really far. And then he looks down really good. So the head is independently articulated from the neck. It goes all around. So there's tons of movement. Even though he's got this overlay, uh, it does really like just work. It doesn't get in the way either. Good, good tilt, side to side, full rotation, all that good stuff. We've got arms that go out at the shoulders. They, of course, rotate all the way around. You're going to have to watch one side, you know, because you've got the tube over here. Uh, there is a butterfly joint inside there. It works well enough. But, of course, he does have an overlay, so it does get in the way. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows, and then we've got hinges, vertical hinges here on the left and rotation. And what does he have on the right? We've got a vertical hinge over here as well. And then we've got a normal figure underneath of this overlay, but of course it's an overlay. So he's not gonna be as dynamic as other figures. So he swivels side to side, of course, and then you've got a little bit of back and forth and tilt, but you're not really gonna have much in the way of crunch. Like he's gonna go forward slightly, but not, not much. Uh, legs go out about this far. I have heard some folks have issues with these legs being really, really loose, or at least the, uh, the, the joint in the crotch being loose. I'm not experiencing that, so I'm not really sure how widespread that may or may not be. Uh, legs kick forward. They kick backwards a little bit. You do have a thigh cut up there. We've got double jointed knees. They go all the way back. And then we've got our boot cut right there. You've got rocker. And we've got really good hinges. So very, very normal figure for the line. I mean, there's nothing missing. There's nothing uh, different here, except for the fact that like some figures, he does have an overlay. Uh, so that does impede the articulation because, I mean, it's exactly what you think. It's a big rubbery, soft plastic piece that sits over the, the ab articulation. So of course it's going to be hindered. Otherwise though, very happy with the way he moves. And I'm, and I'm personally not experiencing uh, whatever issues there may be with those uh, thigh joints around, around the crotch. Now, as far as the design, the look, I'm very, very happy with how Barbecue is presented in, in the classified line just because he is, well, he's different. He's, he's still a very familiar figure. When you get him in your hands, you instantly know that this is a classified figure. It very much feels like the rest, but he's orange and he's, he's just different. He's, he's got a fully helmeted head. Uh, so there's a lot that's, that's similar, but at the same time, there's a lot that's different about this design when you compare him to, I don't know, anything else in the line. Of course, he's orange, so I'm, I'm kind of partial, I guess, to begin with. But at the same time, this is a pretty solid looking figure and he, he looks like a tactical fireman. So, uh, so I think that's pretty cool. And I think it comes through really nicely here. There's, there's one big thing about this figure that I'm not the happiest with, but it's not enough to really diminish him too much for me. Uh, but at the base level, I do think he looks really cool. The, what paint he does have is pretty nicely applied. Like you've got some tampo work on the arm. There's some tampo work on the uh, the tank on the back, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, and you've got, you know, little bits of color here and there, but for the most part, he's just molded plastic uh, with little accent colors on him, which I think is okay. The, the sort of overlay, the harness on top of him, while it does impede articulation, it beefs him up a little bit. It makes him look like he's wearing a little bit more protective gear maybe. So it makes it look like he He's, you know, actually uh, going to go into something that could, I don't know, burn him alive. So I do like that. Uh, you've got all these sort of like bits and bobs and, and pieces that are attached to it, like, you know, maybe respiratory gear and things of that nature. Uh, but, but I think he looks really solid. The colors pop and they're nice and vibrant. 
they clash with each other. So like the harness is is a different color than his bodysuit. It's like a it's sort of a deeper orange red. It's not the same bright orange that the bodysuit is. And then of course you've got uh, all of this sort of off black, slightly grayed out uh, armor plating that sits over top of him from the the collar piece to uh, to the boots to of course the gauntlets and things like that. Now there is something that I said I don't particularly like. And we'll talk about it more in a minute, but it's the backpack and it's really how it attaches. Like you can see it's on him, but it's like crooked right now. Uh, so it just pegs in, like it just pegs right into the back and it just sort of sits funny. I think it looks really good, but at the same time, uh, I think I think for the kind of figure it is and the fact that he's got this overlay for the harness on his, on his chest, I think it makes implementing this and attaching it to the figure maybe a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. But at the same time, I think for the most part, it looks fine. Like when you're looking at him from the front, you're not gonna be able to tell. Uh, when you look at him from the side though, it does sort of look, it does sort of look a little weird. Uh, so it's not the best, it's not the biggest deal either, so it's kind of one of those things, it's like, eh, it's sort of a problem, it's sort of an issue, but at the end of the day, I'm probably not, probably not going to care about it, you know, come tomorrow morning. And then, of course, we've got what I think is a really solid head sculpt here. So it's just a helmeted head, there is no head underneath this, there is no swappable head for this guy, but I'm perfectly fine with that. I think this, this helmet uh, that he wears, I think it just looks cool. It's, it's very, uh... I don't, I don't really know the word I'm looking for. Like, it doesn't look very technologically advanced. It just sort of looks like a bucket on his head with, you know, like some vents and some dials on it, maybe. And then you've got this super, super metallic mouth guard here with the black visor. It just sort of, it just sort of looks old. It looks very ancient, almost. It doesn't look like it's really technologically advanced. And I'm actually happy with that. It looks, you know, a little bit more... Uh, form or function over form rather if, if, if we could go that far so it's a pretty cool design and again I mean the range on it too because of the design of the neck and this head is pretty wild so I'm really happy with everything going on from the neck up on this guy I think the the overall build construction paintwork sculpt is really nicely done in conjunction with some some pretty crazy articulation up there now as far as accessories goes barbecue has a pretty solid spread and he does he does have the thing that I really like. He has complete weapon storage too on his person, so you can have everything attached. He doesn't even have to hold his accessories. They can all be stored, which, you know, it's not a thing for everybody, but it, it's a thing for me. So we've got a few different accessories here. And then, like I mentioned, we've got the backpack. So we've already kind of talked about it, but let's, uh, you know, let's talk about it again too. So we've got to start with, we've got his uh, axes here and one of them stores on the backpack. And I will say that this, this is the bigger ax. It's incredibly difficult to actually get it in, at least for me, uh, like the actual uh, slot here on the backpack is pretty tight. That said, I'd rather it be too tight and a little bit of a pain to get in than too loose and it's just gonna fall right out. So once it's in there, it seems to very much be in. Uh, there isn't really any paint on this guy except for the silver for the blade, but the sculpt is good. And honestly, the lack of paint, the just the matte black finish for the plastic ties in with the figure, so I'm not, not overly beat up about that. We've got a little uh, holster on his leg for the other axe, for his little axe. And this one is also kind of weird to, to sort of get in there, but once it's in, it, it, it's going to stay. Uh, so you've got two axes, one small, one one large. And this one is, is pretty cool. So you've got kind of like a, a knuckle grip here where he holds it. There's silver paint on that. And then you've got silver paint for the blade. And it, it's fairly similar to the, to the bigger axe. Just a you know, in terms of style, it's just not exactly the same. They're different different types of axes, so I do like that. And then we've got his uh, his gun, his blaster here, and this of course is attached to the backpack by this cable. It's not a bendy wire or anything, but it's fairly pliable. You are gonna have to watch, you know, kind of moving it around and twisting it so that it doesn't get kinked or anything like that. But it does look pretty good. It's kind of a futuristic kind of you know mini water blaster thing, but it looks good and it fits nicely into the holster. Again, no paint on it though, so there's there's kind of a, a lack of paint. He knocked his backpack off. So we come to the last part of him, is, and that's the backpack. And I think for the most part, it looks, it looks good. But like I said, it does attach kind of oddly, so it attaches through the overlay and then into the back but it sticks out really, really weird. Like it, it doesn't conform to the body at all. Like it's not a backpack. It's literally just a thing that's hanging off his back. So I'm not, I'm not the happiest in terms of how it attaches, 
but for the most part, it does stay fairly well. I mean, I obviously I did just knock it off, but that hasn't happened to me too much. Of course, it happens while I'm filming. So uh, we've got, you know, a little bit of paint on here, some tampography for like warnings, you know, because it's like a combustible equipment here. And then you've got a bunch of bits and bobs and little detail inside the actual uh, backpack itself. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I like it. I think it looks good and it very much completes his, his look. I do wish there was a different way to attach it in some fashion just to sort of like cinch it to the back, you know, maybe kind of heat up that peg and try to form it. But at the same time, it does kind of stay once it's in. It's like, that's the theme with everything so far. Once it's in, it's in. But at the same time, it is a little bit on the, uh, on the loosey goosey side because it really, you know, it's just going to fall out if you do too much with it. So you do have to watch that. But otherwise, otherwise, I do think he has a pretty solid array of accessories here. So yeah, Barbecue's a really solid figure. I, I really don't have a lot to gripe about, and and that even you know takes into consideration the the backpack. I don't I don't think it's implemented that well because it just it does it sort of hangs really weird on his back. But overall, it's it's kind of like a non-issue really. It's something to to note and something to mention. But at the end of the day, it's not something that I truly truly am gonna like knock him down a bunch of pegs for. I think he's a really solid figure. Uh, he looks fantastic. He moves well. Of course, he is a little bit more limited because of that uh, overlay piece, but it's not a big deal and I think he really looks the part he looks like some sort of tactical firefighter kind of character and I'm really happy with with everything from presentation to accessories you can store all of it and, and just the look he, he looks fantastic and he moves really well and it's a cool different figure to kind of add to the line of, of army guys uh, he's gonna be really uh, something that stands out amongst the rest of the classified line so that's gonna do it for this look at the GI Joe classified series barbecue let me know what you guys think feel free to like comment subscribe and share and until next time